What's going on guys? I'm D Thomas from NC, back with another video. And today I'm gonna be doing a one year review of our HQ Mega Cade that was purchased from ExtremeHomeArcades.com. Now I'm not affiliated with Extreme Home Arcades in any shape, form, or fashion. They do not sponsor my videos, nor do I get any type of commissions check from the machines that they sell. Aww. Although that would be pretty sweet, I'm a paying customer just like you, so with that being said, the thoughts and opinions, pros and cons, likes and dislikes that you hear in today's review will be true and authentic to my overall experience thus far. Now I wanna give you guys a brief gaming history about myself. I'm an 80s baby who grew up in the 90s. I've been gaming for as long as I can remember. My mom and dad purchased my little brother and I an Atari 7800. I've been a hardcore gamer ever since. Now we didn't own a Sega Genesis or a PlayStation 1. However, we had some friends that lived up the street. They had those consoles, so we would just go to their crib and play. Um, my aunt purchased us a Super Nintendo for Christmas and every Nintendo console after that I have owned. Every PlayStation I've owned with the exception of the PS1 and I've owned every Xbox with the exception of the OG Xbox, which is the very first one. But being that it was the 90s, guys, the 90s, we spent a lot of quarters in the arcade. So the thought of having my own arcade as an adult, that wasn't even in my mind. I didn't even think that could be a thing unless you were like filthy rich or something like that. So here we are, 2021, you have Arcade One Up and you have a lot of other companies out there that build their own arcade machines. So whenever Extreme Home Arcade hit my radar and I saw that you could own an arcade machine that had every console ever made, it was a no brainer, guys. Now, when it comes to video games, I consider myself an all around type gamer. What I mean by that, you have some gamers that just stick to playing sport games and you have some gamers that stick to playing fighting games. But with me, I play everything, shooting games, fighting games, racing, strategy, RPG, puzzle, you name it, I have it, I play it, I enjoy it. So with all of that being said, guys, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this review. Okay, so the HQ Mega Cade. I'm going to break this up into like three parts. Uh, first, I'm gonna go over the build quality. Then I will jump into the software and wrap things up. I will tell you about the fun factor and then my overall thoughts and opinions. So as far as the build quality, the artwork, the wood, the material, the joysticks, the screen, speakers, lights, and LEDs, let's go over that. So first, let's jump off with the artwork. Now, I've had this machine for a solid year now, 13 months to be exact, okay? And as I move in a little bit closer, I want to let you guys know that this Mega K has been in a, a well air conditioned room since I've had it. And as far as seeing any bubbles on the side, you can see one right there. You can just rub that on out. Okay. And according to EHA, the bubbles that appear on the side of this artwork is pretty much normal. Now, as you take a look at this machine, the color and everything has held up pretty good. Let me turn this down a little bit. <laughs> All right. So moving in real close, very few bubbles on this left hand side. Now, this damage right here that you see, this what this is not uh, EHA's fault. <laughs> Either myself or my friend that helped me move this upstairs. One of us did this or maybe I did this side and he did that side. I'm not too sure, but that was all us, you know. But trying to move this beast upstairs, I didn't care about those little marks right there. But I just wanted to show you guys some of the bubble that you will see on the side of the artwork. And you pretty much can just rub that right on out like I'm doing. Okay. But for the most part, with this being on the inside and hasn't been exposed to any kind of light, this is the left side on how the artwork looks and haven't experienced any bubbles there. Let's go and look at the right hand side and it's pretty much the same thing. The artwork has held up pretty good. All right. Haven't had any issues there. 
moving in really close to see if you can see any bubbles. There's one right there. It's actually two, three. You can just rub those right on out. All right, see that bubble right there? So this is pretty normal. So as far as the aesthetics go, as far as the bubbling goes, this is the most I've seen on my machine. Like I've had it for a solid year. And I have an arcade one up that sits on the right and another arcade one up that sits on the left. Um, this is a, a air conditioned room, not exposed to any sunlight or anything. And according to EHA, these bubbles are normal. All right. So as far as the bubbling goes on the artwork, that's pretty much it. I'm satisfied with that. It's held up pretty well. All right, so let's go on to the front of the kick plate. Now, this design we picked offline. I like it, it's dope. This right here, you see these little scratches right here? This also happened as we were moving this upstairs. So this is no fault of EHA. My only complaint or dislike about this is, check this out. So you see all the way across is black. But then when you get right here, you see that white right there? So whoever cut this didn't do a straight job and you have a little bit of white exposed. So with the amount of money I'm spending, just paying attention to detail, that's something that I do not like. Another thing also too, as you can see, look at this. It's this, this, uh, this sticker is not, it's not sticking right here. Um, it was the same way down here and I applied some double-sided tape to get it to stick, but it was pretty much, uh, it was a little bit looser than this. So basically I just peeled some of it back and put some, uh, you see that? Moving a little bit closer. It's not sticking all the way. So it was a little bit uh, worse off um, a little while, maybe a couple of months or so ago. So I just put some double-sided tape on here but I didn't touch this portion of it just so I can show you that. So as you can see, I rub across like that and you can hear it sticking, sticking back together. So if I had a nitpick about something, it would be about, see this right here, not sticking all the way, but it's nothing that some uh, double-sided tape won't handle. So if I had a nitpick about something, it would be that. Other than that, from a cosmetic standpoint, when it comes to this front kick plate and the artwork on the side, I'm good to go. I have no complaints about that. As far as the light guns right here, that's pretty cool. Nothing has been wrong with them or the volume button is worked just fine. Uh, this little nick right here, I think this is probably something that maybe I or one of my friends did by accident, I don't know. But other than that, from a cosmetic standpoint, uh, the artwork has held up pretty well as we move on to the control panel all right the control panel with this uh, plastic on top it has protected the artwork this Genji artwork which is pretty cool um, I've recently seen someone that just got their Mega Cade and I think it's the same kind of plastic that they got here or plexiglass they got it put on right here as well and had I known I was able to do something like that, I probably would have done that too. Just because I think it looks cool, but I didn't know about that, so I'm, it's cool. All right, so looking at the control plant panel, all four or five joysticks, player one through four, they have held up pretty well. Um, player one, blue joystick sees the most action. So the controller, the joystick has a little bit it's a little loose, but like I said, this player one joystick sees the most action. As we look at player three, not too much giveaway. All right. The only time these get action is when my friends come over and we're four player, in it. We, you know, we playing four player games. But uh, looking at player two, the joystick works just fine. All these controls work just fine, but not too much giveaway. You know, player one sees the most action right behind and behind that would be player two. As we look at player four, not too much giveaway with that. Now, I'm not 
exactly sure what type of joystick and buttons are used for this machine, but they have held up pretty well. Are they Sanwa? I don't think so. But all of the joysticks, all of the buttons, even this four-way joystick, they have held up pretty good. This right here is very, very solid, all right? Even with my trackball, the trackball has been great. <laughs> if I had to gripe about anything with this control panel, <laughs> It wouldn't be the it wouldn't be the placement of where Genji is because I know a lot of people have hit me across the head with why did y'all put y'all joystick right there? But hey, that wasn't done intentionally. But if I had to complain about anything about this control panel, it would be the lights that were used to light up these buttons. Um, I've actually replaced all of these. Uh, the ones that EHA used whenever I first got my machine. I think I had it for like six months or so and I ended up switching all of them out. So uh, those lights didn't last too long at all. And these are, they shine a lot brighter and they look a lot better. Um, right here I have my Wii U light bar. Like I said, uh, I did a video on this. I didn't know that I needed a Wii U bar or light bar to play uh, Wii games. I thought that this uh, sensor bar right here which goes for the light guns I thought I could y'all also use my Wiimotes for that but that wasn't the case so anyways let's open up the control panel and look up under here the wiring for all of the buttons and controls is, is pretty neat the only thing I have in here is um, that's the cord for my Wii U for my light bar right here and I just, I never put the screws back in this control panel. These are the spare lights that I have for my buttons. And I keep my remote for the TV as well as my PlayStation 4 and my Xbox One controller because I do have a Xbox One and a PS4 on the inside of this Mega K, which I will be replacing with an all digital PS5 as well as an all, well, not an all digital Xbox series series s i think i'm gonna put a series x in there so moving right along guys let's go look at the speakers these speakers on the left and the right the brand is cyber acoustics they are really loud they definitely get the job done let me turn them up a little bit down here Germany, very loud there's also there's also a subwoofer in the in the bottom or inside the machine is a subwoofer and uh, this these speakers are very loud. I don't know if you can tell the difference in the video because you know it's hard to tell the audio, but the video probably doesn't do it any justice. These speakers are very very loud. Believe me when I tell you that. And anybody who who has one of these machines, I'm pretty sure they can attest and tell you also that these machines are very very loud all right i mean <laughs> the speakers are very loud so no complaints there you don't want to wake the neighbors with that all right moving right along this marquee hq mega k is it's, it's been i haven't had any issues with there or the back lighting that lights it up uh if you've been watching my videos for a while you know that i recently acquired a uh, active marquee which did not come with the mega cave but had i known it looked so good i probably would have gotten one off rip but thus far guys no issues uh with the build of this machine if you look at the molding the t molding right here i mean everything looks good and i have like zero complaints about this at all now some would say they probably use cheap wood. I don't know the difference between cheap wood and expensive wood, but overall, the build quality on this machine, all of this is really good, all right? Now, some would argue and say that <clears throat> they use cheap parts uh, for the joysticks and buttons. For me, this, this cab is a very premium built cabinet. I don't need a set of Bose speakers in here or some Linux to, you know, to get the sound that I need to play the video game. But these speakers get the job done. 
the control uh, joysticks and buttons are very great. I'm satisfied when it comes to most of this. The only thing that I dislike is, you know, what I said earlier about this kick plate. All right. So as far as the build quality, let's also talk about the TV. This is a 55 inch Hitachi TV. I haven't had any issues with this TV since I had this Mega Cade. It works just fine. The colors are very vivid, bright. It's, the colors seem true to like, just say whenever you're playing a game like Zelda, when you're playing it on this 55 inch screen, it looks, it looks great to me. Like everything looks true to scale and no issues with the TV. Now, if I had a choice or had I known uh, before purchasing this, I probably would have thrown a, a 4K Samsung in here just because. Okay, so I wanted to show you the inside of the Megacade. And as you can see right here, a lot of wiring going on. <laughs> but some would say that they are displeased. While well, I've read in the comment section of my video when I did the initial review that this blue power strip is a cheap power strip used from Walmart. Well, I haven't had any issues with this power strip. I don't know if it came from Walmart, Dollar General. I have no idea, but I haven't had any issues with this power strip. And I have not only the Mega Cade and this TV plugged up in here, but I also have a PS, PS4 and the Xbox One. Like I said before, I will be replacing those with a PS5 all digital as well as a Series X. But um, I know a lot of people have commented saying that, you know, with the subwoofer, this is the subwoofer right here. A lot of people have been saying that, you know, with the subwoofer being here and the hard drives being right there, that could cause an issue. But I'm here to tell you that I haven't had any issues with my hard drives being here and the subwoofer being right there. All right. So there's a lot of wiring that takes place down in there, but I haven't had any issues with anything overheating or with the hard drives, all right? So I just wanted to show you guys the inside, the back of the Mega Cade. Coming up top, here's the TV, that 55 inch Hitachi I told you guys about, as well as those are the speakers. And like I said, I haven't had any issues with any of this. And I'm on this thing a lot. Okay, so now that I got all of that other stuff out of the way, as far as the aesthetics and the hardware, let's talk about the software, the games. How well do they work on this Mega Cave? And guys, in my honest opinion, they work really good. Now I wanna let you know that whenever I got this Mega Cave, it was my very first time dealing with hyperspin ever all right so uh whenever i did get this machine it was running windows 7. i had it with a uh, 8 terabyte hard drive and i immediately upgraded to a 10 terabyte shortly after i got my machine and then i upgraded to another 10 terabyte and now it is running the 16 terabyte manhattan project drive now i must say most of the games that i've played on here they work, and I've come across some that don't work, all right? So I would say about 96 to 97% of the games work, and then you have the other 3 to 4% that just don't work. Some games you'll come across, or games I have come across, you'll try to boot it up or put a coin in, and it'll just be stuck on the title screen. Now, I don't know if that is because it's a bad ROM or anything like that, but for the most part, most of the games that I do try to play, they work. And I haven't even scratched the surface on games that are on here. So right now, we are on Arcade Classics. So whenever you get your machine, I did get a set of light guns. I didn't get a spinner. I didn't get a flight stick, nor did I get a steering wheel. So I can't speak on how uh, easy or difficult it may be to mess with those. All I got was these five joysticks and the light guns. However, I do wish I would have got at least a, wish, a spinner. But anyways, so we are in arcade. What are we in? Arcade classics? Yes, arcade classics. Almost forgot that quick. All right, so any game you want to come to here in arcade classics, 
it's easy to just come here, select the game, and start playing. So let's just say if you want to play Metal Slug. You come here, hit play on one start, and you can dive into some Metal Slug just like that. And I know a lot of these games, and like one big selling point for this machine for me was the fact that Neo Geo. I never owned a Neo Geo, but I remember back in the day going to the arcade, dumping quarters into a Neo Geo machine. So it's great to have the actual arcade in my house. All right, so check this out. So here's Metal Slug. You hit your coin button, play on one start, and you can just come in here and have a blast. Now one thing I do want to mention, because right now, this is running the Manhattan Project Drive. And one difference is with the Manhattan Project Drive versus the 10 terabyte drive that Extreme Home Arcades, I think that's the standard drive that they're still selling in their machines. Whereas the 16 terabyte is offered as an upgrade. 16 terabyte, a lot of, it has a lot of artwork. So whatever game you go to, it has dedicated artwork on both sides. Whereas on EHA, with the 10 terabyte hard drive, you might have something totally different than the game that you're playing on the sides. So that's something that I wanted to mention. But you can just come in here, guys, and have a good time. Just literally relive your entire childhood playing these games. And I have not played every game in here, guys. <laughs> if I had to take a guess on how many games I played, I just got killed just now. But if I had to take a guess on how many games I probably play, I don't know, maybe a couple of hundred. But if this, if it's seventy thousand, it's seventy thousand plus games on here. I don't even think I'll be able to play all those games in my lifetime, to be honest. All right, so it's as simple. You just come here, play a game, select whatever game it is you want to play, and you can have fun with it. All right. Let's just say, for instance, let's scroll. Oh, let's scroll down. I want to show you guys. Uh, Light guns, because I do get a, I did get a, some light guns, all right? So say if I want to play some light gun games. Oh, real quick, while I'm on this main wheel, the 10 terabyte hard drive that is offered with EHA, because like I said, this was my first time dealing with hyperspin, I would see people that would comment on my videos, because I've, I've, I've covered this Mega K showcasing it all last year, right? So folks would come in the comment section and talk about this main wheel. They said that the main wheel seemed very cluttered. Like the main wheel on the 10 terabyte hard drive that is currently offered by EHA, they say that it's really cluttered. Like right now, the 16 terabyte drive, it has everything more or less organized. And this is a community driven drive by a lot of individuals that have come together that just love gaming. And they're just trying to take what is offered on the 10 terabyte hard drive and they're just making it better with this 16 terabyte hard drive. Now, honestly, I don't think you can go wrong either way. Personally, I think the 16 terabyte hard drive should be the standard drive going forward, but it is currently being offered as an upgrade. I'm not the owner of the company, um, but you know, maybe that's something that will probably come into fruition down the line, but right now, the 10 terabyte is still the, it's the standard currently, and the 16 is being offered as an uh, uh, upgrade. So. On the 10 terabyte hard drive, you will see single player, like not single player games, but you will come across like, let's just say uh, NBA 2K18. All of these games will be on the main wheel versus being categorized. And a lot of people found that to be very cluttered, uh, spaghetti type wheel. But with the 16 terabyte hard drive wheel, it's cleaned all of that up. Now, whenever I did, cause whenever I did have the 10 terabyte hard drive, like I said, that was my first time using Hyperspin. So to me, it wasn't cluttered. If I was looking for a specific game or category, I knew where to go because I got used to that wheel. So it, it wasn't bad to me, but I guess the, some others, they were like, look, this wheel is pretty, it's not the greatest, it could use some TLC. So that's what this Manhattan Project Drive uh, is doing. But anyways, the 10 terabyte drive is not bad. But like I said, it can use some TLC. So let me go back down to the gun games because I just want to show you guys how well the emulators or how well it works. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you, you've seen me cover. I play, I haven't played every console. Like I haven't 
showcase every console on my channel, but I, I plan on showing a lot more this year as well. Uh, did I go inside? Oh, I didn't, oh I'm, in, okay, I'm in here. So let's go to one of my uh, favorite games I like to play. Me and my wife play, like to compete in a lot. Point Blank, very dope uh, game. And you got Police Training. Love playing it, right? So, got my light gun right here. Trainer, version 1.5. Police Academy Trainer. Simply put your money in. All right. Well, and we're going to queue up. Is that loud enough? Uh, let's start off on easy, yo. <laughs> and we're going to put it on speed. We try to shoot right here in front of the camera. Right for y'all. Let me see if I can get them all. Oops. Oh. Good so far. Oh, oh. I spoke too soon. Did I pass? Ah, oh, fail. Run it back. Let's do the headshot accuracy. See if I can get all straight headshots. And I want to check out those sending light guns too. Oops. All headshots, baby. Well, I was off a couple, but no big deal. Let's go back to the <laughs> let's go back to the other one real quick. Let's go back to the speed. Because I could have did better than that. All right, let's try it again, guys. All right. Oh! Ah! How did I pass? Okay, I pass. So yeah, that's the light gun game. And, and you know, like, let's back up out of this. In any game you want to play, guys, Operation Wolf, Point Blank is another dope game. I went in there by accident. But if you want to come here and play some Point Blank, you can do that as well. All right, so put some money in real quick. Play it by myself. We won't put it on the same practice stage real quick. All right, uh, 18 times, 18 hits. Okay, all right, let's get it, man. Come on, Austin. Judgment. So I hit him 18 times with Eve. All right. So that's that's your light gun games. Um. Now the community is always asking for more games to be put on this this machine, and you know it's quite a few games I would want to see on here. One in particular is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, made by Raw Thrills, but maybe that maybe that'll come in the future. All right, so let's just say let's scroll right on up. Let's just say we got the Dave and Busters and Techno Parrot up in there, and they were pretty good too. I'm still working on. I know the guys in the Manhattan Project they're still working on those to iron out some wrinkles in that. Let's just say if you wanted to come and play some Dreamcast. I did get, also get two uh, Xbox 360 wireless controllers. Let's go ahead and power those on. And you want to come in here and you want to play some Dreamcast, you can do that. Okay, let's just say Marvel vs. Capcom. This is Marvel vs. Capcom, boom. You want to come in here and play some Marvel vs. Capcom, you can do that. And I've covered, I've showed, I did a video showcasing Dreamcast uh, gameplay and it looks really good, it holds up really well. And um, I enjoy it. Another thing too, some games take a long, uh, little longer than others. Like if you're playing like SNES games and uh, Sega Genesis games, they don't take long to load up. Another thing I want to let you know too is that on the 10 terabyte hard drive, whenever I would, whenever you would play games like, whenever you're in Dreamcast or Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, PlayStation you don't get this artwork right here. You Like say for instance, we're in Dreamcast right now. So you would see the Dreamcast logo and the words Dreamcast down on both sides. You don't get the dedicated artwork. 
So with the Manhattan Project, that's what they've done. They added to where you, you know, every game has its own specific dedicated artwork. It's not a deal breaker because I, I didn't mind seeing it whenever I played the game. It didn't interfere with the gameplay. So, but it just is really cool to see the artwork on the side. So here it is, Marvel's Capcom. Press start, and you can come in here. Let's go to arcade. We'll rock out with Ryu and Chun Li. Back up a little bit because I don't need to be this close. I don't need to be like this. Just showing you guys some quick gameplay on how this looks. And I would be here all day trying to showcase every game and every console in here. Did you see how good this looks? Can y'all hear that? Is that loud enough? I already showed you guys, these speakers can get pretty loud. I still feel like that's kind of low. So yeah. There's Marvel vs. Capcom. Oh, oh. Y'all wanna see me get beat down? Get on the ground, boy! You about to get that work? Oh! I say you about to get that work and it shot me in the face. So just like that, there it is. Wireless controllers. Playing Marvel vs. Capcom. I got dealt with. So <laughs> I got beat down just like that. And this right here, if I'm not mistaken, this is the entire full set of Dreamcast games. So it's pretty cool that you can just come in here and enjoy all of these games. Now, I haven't played every game in here, all right? You got, what is this? You got Dreamcast, you got Dreamcast Indies. I haven't scratched the surface on those and look how many games are. Look how many Dreamcast Indie games there are in here. I don't even know the count, but it's a lot of games in here, all right? So say if you want to come back and play some Sega Genesis. Now I want to let you know that I do not have um, my Sega Genesis controls, they are not mapped. I don't think they're mapped to the joist, uh, to the wireless controller. But we gonna find out. Let's play, let's play, can we play NBA Jam? Let's go with NBA Jam. One of my favorite basketball games from the 90s, all right? Favorite arcade games, favorite bat, one of my favorite basketball games next to Run and Gun. So, let me see if I got this. I don't know, I don't think this is mapped to this controller. We are gonna find out in a second. So you see how quickly that game booted up? And it's just that simple, you power on your machine and you come in here and you, you can play. Now, I, like I said, I, I think I mentioned this before, but you see I don't have a, a, a I don't have a, what do you call it? I got a brain for it. What do you call it, man? I can't think of the name of it. You know the twisty thing. I can't think of it. <laughs> I can't think of I don't have a steering wheel, flight stick, or none of that, so I don't have to worry about mapping any of that stuff. What is that? A spinner. It's called a spinner. My goodness. So I'm pressing the button. Nothing is happening. Okay, so it is mapped to the joystick and buttons. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, most of the uh, machines that they build already come mapped with the joysticks and buttons, unless you get... Uh, Wireless controllers. Oh, why did I put it in initials? I didn't even do that. So I'm gonna get a couple shots off just to show you how NBA Jam looks. Let's see this over to the side. Let's go with. Let's go. Magic Johnson got his. I mean, Magic Johnson. Larry Johnson got his dunks filled all the way up. Charlotte Hornets. DT from NC. Let's get a couple of dunks in real quick. Let's just show you how good NBA Jam look. Um, let's see, that's Turbo. Oh no, don't shoot it, pal. Oh my gosh. Pass that back. I'm trying to adjust the volume. Oh, F8. Block, block. Let me get this dunk, boy. Why is you laying it up? Why is he laying it up? You're supposed to bang that, man. You're supposed to bang that out the door. Pass that. Let's go up. There you go. 
Mm -hmm. NBA Jam, have a good time playing that back out. All right? So yeah, guys, same thing. You want to play some Sega Master System, you come in here, you boot this Joker up. And let's just say, ooh, Double drag. Let's play some Double drag. Is this working with the controllers? I like to play a lot of my console games with the wireless controllers. I don't mind playing with the joysticks and buttons, but if I don't have to. Hold on. Okay, so this is utilizing the joysticks and buttons. So they just come and punch down the stomach and they casually walking off real slow. What I've never understood is, bro, why don't you just hop in the car, chase them down real quick, and get your girl back? So here we are. Oh, shoot. My cousin had one of these Sega Master Systems. Come on, guys. Bruh! This dude is handling me. This dude was single handling me, so yeah, there it is. You want to play some of this? You can do that. So, console games, let's back up out of this. Console games, you can have a good time, man. Of course, Neo Geo, one of my favorite systems. You know Neo Geo. Come on, guys. Neo Geo, you come in here, you want to play some Neo Geo, and this. click on this right here. Fatal Fury, real about, real about Fatal Fury 2. Boot that up. Add your quarters, your virtual quarters, and you can have a good time playing this, man. Relive, literally, relive your childhood, you know? If you would have told a 10 year old D. Thomas from NCA, bro, when day you're gonna have an arcade in your crib, I would have been like, nah, that's what? Really? So I just wanna show you guys, real quick, how these games look, how they hold up. And I will say, In my entire time of having this machine, I have been, I've been happy with it. I have been happy. There has been more ups than downs. When I say downs, I would say coming across uh, games that don't work. Now, I'm pretty sure like if you try, like, let's just say if you came across My Little Pony or something like that and it didn't work, are you really going to trip about My Little Pony not working? Really? Oh, shoot. I'm getting beat down. But yeah, so it's good to have a community that's in place right now. Guys working on this drive to like trying to find like find games that, that are on here that don't work to get them off of to get them off of here. You know what I mean? Because there's no need to have let's just say if you got 70,000 games on here and 200 of them, I'm just throwing a number out there, 200 of them don't work. There's no point of having them, you know what I mean? So, as the team, as the, the community continues to grow, and as we continue to work on the drives and just to make this overall gaming experience better, you know, they eliminate those games that don't work, you know? And games that, the games that don't work, uh, they, you know, the community, we do what we can to try to get them to work. And if we can't get them to work, then get them off the drive, bro, because it's just taking up unnecessary space. All right? So let's just back out of that. I just want to show you guys how some of these games look, how some of these games look and how good they play. PlayStation 2, same thing. You want to come here and play some PlayStation 2? You can do that. You want to play some God of War? Have that. It. Looks good. Works great. You know, somebody told me about a game called Roses? What is it called? I can't, it's called, I can't remember the exact, I'm gonna have to go look at one of my, look in my comment section. It's a wrestling game with some females, something with some roses. I can't think of the name of it. But, let me show you this PlayStation 2. If you want to come here, PlayStation 2, best selling console of all time. Hear that startup sound, what y'all know about that? You want to come here and play that? Play some Ratchet and Clank, you can do that. Of course, I got this map to the wireless controller. I don't know why anybody would want to play PS2 with joysticks and buttons, but everybody has their, their preferences, you know? 
Insomniac Games. Can't wait to play the new Ratchet and Clank whenever it comes out. Sometime this year. So if you want to come here and play some Ratchet, let's see if I got to play this before. Sure was. I sure was. Let me back up some of This is full screen. Can I skip this? Yes, I can. Meanwhile, there's a factory near on a nearby planet. Let's skip all of that too. Local time, 11.47 a.m. And guys, I've covered, I've done a PlayStation 2 video. I plan on doing another one and showcasing some more video, uh, games in the PS2. So if there's a specific game you would like to see me play, uh, please leave that down in the comment section and I'll be glad to play it. But anyways, here we are, Ratchet and Clank. And Welcome to the I'm moving around with the, we are here to offer you advice with the analog, all right. Let me see how good this plays. Now, have I played every game in this PS2 uh, catalog? No, I haven't. Not every single game. I don't even know what the total count of PS2 games it is. But I just want to show you. I showed you that God of War before and how good it looks. And I just wanted to show you this Ratchet and Clank. One of my favorite PS2 games. I think we have every last one of them that came out. All right, so that's Ratchet and Clank, PlayStation 2. Yo, I cannot remember that that one wrestling game with the female wrestlers. I'm gonna have to like remember that game and play it in the video. All right, so you see how good that looks. You see how great that runs. So let's pause that and back out of the PlayStation 2. So many games, guys. I think this right here also is a full set. So just showing you guys uh, some of these games that is on this this mega cave just only showed you a few and I must say that overall we that I have been very happy I've been satisfied with everything uh, most for the most part with this mega cave if I had to do it all again would I still go through extreme home arcades would I still pull the trigger and buy this mega cave I would that's me now I would encourage anybody before you purchase from anywhere or extreme home arcades, shop around because you might come across another company who's building a similar machine that may cost less. And we all know that if you build your own machine, you know, get your own materials and parts, you'll come out a lot cheaper. But I'm not saying uh, this machine is, it is expensive. I will say that it is expensive. I spent over six grand for this thing. So whenever you're making that type of investment, you wanna be sure that you are getting a pretty solid and quality product. Um, this machine, this Mega K, it is not flawless. It is not perfect. I will say that again, it is not perfect. By any means, nothing in life is. But overall, I am happy with this machine. Uh, there's a lot of things with the 10 terabyte drive that does need some fine tuning. Like I said, this right here is the Manhattan Project 16 terabyte drive. And, you know, personally, I feel that this should be the new standard drive going forward. But then again, I don't own Extreme Home Arcades. Um, I don't know if the owner, David, will make that a thing in the future. I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know as far as like, Will they do anything with the 10 terabyte hard drive, updating the software to make it like, for instance, when you play PlayStation 2 games or uh, uh, Sega Genesis games, are they going to change it to where you have the artwork on the side or, or are they going to leave it the way it is? I don't, these things I do not know. 
I mean, that would be great if they did, but like I said, I mean, the 16 terabyte is a lot more space. And you know, once they, once we, once everything is like, uh, how can I say this? Because right now the Manhattan Project is on like version one, uh, version, this is the first iteration of the MP drive. And then, you know, I don't know, a few months down the line, you know, a year down the line, they come out with version two. Got to be more upgraded and, and more stable than what this drive is because when you're dealing with emulation, you're gonna have issues. And like I said, this is my first time dealing with hyperspin. I'm familiar with uh, with a little bit with emulation, but not so much with hyperspin. You know, until I got this mega cable. Overall, guys, fun factor: is this machine fun? Do I enjoy it? Yes, I put a lot of time on this thing. I spend a lot of like if I'm even when I'm not recording a video for YouTube. I'm, I'm spending time on this. A game that I've been playing a lot, I've been, in, I've been in GameCube a lot, and I've been playing Super Mario Strikers. I forgot how, I don't think I've ever played that game before, but sometimes you can forget how good these older games can be. And that Super Mario Strikers on GameCube, oh my God, I really wish that Switch would come out with an updated version of that because that game is so much fun. It looks good. Um, matter of fact, let me go to GameCube real quick and then I'll, I'll close this video out. Uh, I've been talking for a very long time, but guys, I just want to let you know that I, I'm definitely enjoying this machine and uh, would I recommend this to anyone? Yes, I would, rec I would recommend this, but you must understand that this machine does have uh, a, a slight learning curve. It's not as simple as an arcade one up and I plan on doing a separate video talking about uh, the learning curve with this machine, but once you do get your machine and you learn it um, You'll be good to go. You know, I'm still I'm still coming across stuff and learning new things every day Where the heck is that Mario Strikers? Well, you know, I'll probably save that for another video, but I've been having a lot of fun in this GameCube exploring a lot of these older games never played Madagascar though. So anyways guys that's pretty much going to be it. I told, I told you about the hardware. We looked at a little bit of the software and my overall final thoughts and opinion on this Mega K. I like it. I love it. And I want, I wish that uh, anybody that's in the market looking for an arcade, whether you shop with EHA or any other arcade company out there, I just want that gamer to ex have that experience that I'm having with this machine. Just reliving your childhood. You see this right here, it says this game is not playable. Go back to it, what was that, Prince of Persia? Prince of Persia was the second one? Okay, let's click on this and see if this game is up in here. So I know sometimes the games, it'll say that it won't show a video, then it'll just say this game is not available, and it'll be available. So. Let's see if it's gonna be working. Got my controller on. It is extracting. And you can see that I never played it before, so let's see. Live. Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. I think I played this game before. Maybe it was on the PS2, I can't remember. But let's see. Let's see. And after that, I'm gonna go ahead and close out the video. Let's see if Prince of Persia, Sands of Time in here, boy. 97, 98, 99, 100. What we got, what we looking like. So it is in here. So if you come across that and you see that on the screen, uh, don't be alarmed. All right. Ubisoft, right? Yeah, there we go. So all right, guys. Those are my final thoughts. Extreme Home Arcade, Mega K. The customer service from day one has been Top notch. Um, I've been a very satisfied customer. If I came across any issues or any problems that I've had with this machine, reach out to the owner, David. He responds accordingly or in a timely manner and has assisted me with anything that I've had issues with. Uh, right now, there is a very huge community surrounding these machines and EHA, which is a very great thing. So a lot of new machine owners, if they're having issues, they can come right there to the community page and uh, talk about whatever issues they have with their machine and people will be there to help them out. 
So that's going to be it for me for now. If you have any questions about anything about this machine or anything that I didn't go over in this video, leave that down. Leave your questions, thoughts, uh, whatever. Leave it down in the comment section and I will be sure to answer whatever questions you may have because I'm in there all the time. So anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed. I guess I'll go ahead and play some Prince of Persia Sands of Time. All right, guys, so there it is, my one-year review of our HQ Megacade from ExtremeHomeArcade.com. I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you enjoyed this review, show some love. Give this video a thumbs up, and I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace.